what do you mean the interest in my property isn't going to pass to my dependents according to my will? There are certain kinds of property ownership that do not let you transfer your rights to that property when you die. For example, there is something called joint tenancy with rights of survivorship. If you own property with somebody else and that property is owned under joint tenancy with rights of survivorship, when one person dies, the remaining person inherits that person's shares of the property. So that is not something that can be passed on to their heirs or to the people that they have willed um, would get the property. It's important as a person who owns property to know how your property is owned so that you can properly make plans for when you pass on. If you happen to own a property and it's um, tenancy in common, basically you each have rights. It could be split, it could be equal, it could be however it is, but once that person passes on, like let's say there are two people, they each own 50-50, 50% would then be distributed to that person's heirs, while the remaining person would have only 50% of that property's worth for themselves. And then when they pass on, that 50% of course would then go to their heirs. So if this all sounds confusing to you, let's have a conversation and let's make sure if you do own property that you know how your property is owned. So this way you can be sure when you pass on that your interest in that property is going to be allocated the way that you want it to be. Um, same thing happens with life insurance. If you have life insurance, you have different ways that you could own that life insurance and your beneficiary is going to have that particular benefit. It's not going to be um, distributed according to your will. It's going to be based on who the beneficiaries are listed as. So it's important to always make sure that you're one, aware of what you own and how you own it, and two, have a plan in place so that when you pass on, you have the peace of mind knowing that your interests are going to be distributed the way that you want them to be, and also that your family is not going to be bickering about who gets what or how to pay for this or how to pay for that. Um, another thing to think about is if you do own property and you know you have a spouse that's going to be living in that property, are they going to be able to stay there without your source of income coming in, whether it's your pension or um, your income because you're working, whatever the case is, are they going to have to move? Are they going to be able to stay with family? And if so, for how long? If you have children, will they be able to stay? Um, or will they have to relocate and go to a different school district? These are questions that people don't necessarily want to discuss or talk about, but they're so important because they literally affect not just you, but the next generation. Also something to consider, if let's say you're young and you don't have any children, um, why should you bother getting life insurance, right? There are um, debates all over the place, what's a better life that's term or life that's whole? I will always tell you term and then invest the difference, right? Why? If let's say you don't have any children and you don't have a spouse and it's just you, right? What happens if you get sick? Most jobs offer you accidental life insurance, um, dismemberment, things like that, but they don't offer you comprehensive life insurance. So if let's say you get sick, God forbid, and you can't work, what happens usually is that you lose the job and thus you lose the insurance. And now you have no income protection, so you're at a loss. But if you were to have a comprehensive package, like a term life insurance package, you're investing the difference elsewhere so your assets are growing and you get sick, you can usually take from that life insurance policy, even if it's a term policy, only certain ones do it, the ones that I deal with do it, you can take from that term policy, cover your expenses, make sure that you are able to live while you're alive and not have to worry about losing the coverage. And then when you pass on, the remaining balance, of course, will go to whatever designated beneficiary you have. But um, I know I said a lot in this video, so I'm gonna cut it short here, but there are conversations that need to be had and families that are not having these conversations, they usually end up doing GoFundMe pages and trying to figure out how to properly bury their loved one or um, if they can even bury them at all. Sometimes they, they don't have that option and it's not a pleasant situation. So I hope and pray that you'll have the tough conversation that way you can protect yourself and your loved ones and just make sure that things go according to your desires, um, whether you're here or not. I hope that this information is helpful. Monique Noel Gunter, you can reach me on this platform if you have any questions, or you can contact me at 914-619-7537. God bless.